Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today it's time for another Plant of the Week video and this year we're focusing on herbs. Now we're getting to the end. This may actually be the last Plant of the Week video for this year and today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite ones and it's also going to be an exception to one of the rules that I use. Now this video is going to be about ashwagandha. The rule that we're going to break is I don't usually talk about medicinal benefits of herbs because I am not an expert by any means. I don't have any education on the subject. I really don't know. But I do use ashwagandha medicinally and I wanted to talk a little bit about that because I don't have any culinary uses for ashwagandha. So first of all, let's talk about what ashwagandha is. It's an Ayurvedic I can't pronounce that word because I'm not an herbalist, but it's one of the herbs that people use to kind of be a tonic for the body and help, just help the whole body. Now, just as a caveat to this video, don't take anything that I say on face value. Look up everything that I say, because as you can see, I don't know the proper terms. I really actually don't know a lot of what I'm talking about medicinally, but I do know what ashwagandha has done to help me personally. So I've, that's all I'm going to talk about is what it's done to help me personally. But anyway, ashwagandha is an herb that they grow in India, and I think there are some that they grow in South Africa. I use the Indian variety, and I'll put the scientific name down below. But ashwagandha is an herb that is a tender perennial in the areas where it grows naturally. Here in Utah, I didn't think we'd actually be able to grow it because it is a tender perennial. It's only hardy down to zone 8, and the winters do seem to kill it off. But what I did learn is that you can harvest the roots in the first year. So several years ago, I decided maybe it's time for me to start trying to grow ashwagandha because there were several things that I was having issues with, one of which is restless leg, and that's all I'll talk about. But I had severe restless leg, and I read that turmeric and ashwagandha made into a tea called moon milk is one of the ways to help with restless leg. Now, this is where we're going to end the medical discussion. I'm just going to say it did help more than anything else has ever helped. I love ashwagandha. It helps me sleep and it just calms my restless leg down completely to the point where if I'm having a problem with restless leg, I drink the moon milk tea every night for you know maybe about three or four weeks and then I'm good for several months. I don't need to drink it again. But anyway, so ashwagandha has been very worth it for me to grow. So. A few years ago, and I'll link a couple of videos above that I've done on ashwagandha and on growing them, I decided to purchase the seeds. I purchased them from Strictly Medicinal Seeds and started them really, really early in the spring. I started them about February and then kept up potting them. I started them in little tiny six packs, then I moved them up to four inch pots, and then I moved them up to gallon pots so they would be quite large when I put them out in the garden to give them time to grow to harvestable size. Now what you harvest is the roots, and you can get them to harvestable size in one season. So you can grow them as an annual and still harvest them. Harvest them. And it worked beautifully that first year. I got them to a really good harvestable size, harvested the roots, and I've been using those. The other thing that happened is they set seeds. They form these little papery lanterns that I'll show you in a minute, and inside is a red seed that's not really edible. I've heard people use it instead of rennet in cheese making. I don't make cheese, so you know I don't know exactly how that would work, but I saved the seeds and I grew them the next year. And that worked absolutely beautiful. I got more ashwagandha up to harvestable size. But a really interesting thing happened. And that was that the seeds that had fallen to the ground the previous year sprouted near the end of June and grew up to be a harvestable size. So I actually had ashwagandha reseed itself. So I decided to do another experiment and I just took those seeds and put them everywhere. And I actually threw a few of them in my compost pile. Now the seeds that I threw in my compost pile have sprouted up all over the place. Not enough to become a problem, not enough to become invasive. I'm sure if I just threw the whole plant in and didn't bother removing the seeds, we would have an issue with it. But let me show you what it looks like this year and talk a little bit about what happened this year and why I didn't get any plants that are actually up to harvestable size this year. So last year, the area there that I grew ashwagandha in was along this bed. They all grew quite large. We got seeds off them. They were at harvestable size. But we had a very extremely cold winter this year. So all the seeds that I threw down to sprout did not pop up until mid-July. So this is one that popped up after mid-July. 
and this is the only one that actually got to be any decent size but it still hasn't formed the flowers well actually there's one flower down in there and there's another flower over here it didn't you know i don't think we're going to have roots that are great to harvest which is fine because i actually harvested enough last year for like three years worth of ashwagandha here's another plant that didn't quite get up to harvestable size but I think the reason they didn't get up to harvestable size is because they had started so late. We had such a cold spring. Now here's another interesting one. This one actually sprouted in my green stock. I use my own homemade compost to make my potting soil mixes. And we got a larger plant here. It's dehydrated because like I said, the irrigation water is turned off and I'm gonna be pulling all the plants out of these green stocks because I don't want to hand water them. But we got seeds that we can harvest to grow plants for next year. So these are what the seed pods look like when they're unripe. And when they're ripe, they turn papery and they're kind of like tomatillos, kind of like ground cherries, but they don't taste good. You know, I don't think they're gonna hurt you if you eat them, but I, I've heard they're just really, really bitter. So they're not edible, but you can, they have a ton of seeds in them and you can use them to grow your plants next year. So I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these ripe seeds. You can see actually how many seeds come out of just a tiny little seed pod. Just tons and tons. I think what I'm going to do is just go toss a few of these on the ground where I'd like them to grow next year and see what happens. Now to grow ashwagandha to a harvestable size here in Utah, I found that they need to be in full sun. They really absolutely love the sun. You need to have a very, very warm growing season and you need to have them be on the drier side. The ones that grew around my garden beds where they got a lot of extra water did not do well at all. The ones that got watered you know, once or twice a week did really, really well and grew to a really large size. So they like a little bit of drier conditions. They do like to have a rich soil. So the areas where I plant them, I like to enrich those with compost and then mulch them. And then you can actually grow ashwagandha in cooler climates. Now I would love to hear where you live and if you have grown ashwagandha in a cooler climate and what your results have been, and if you found different ways to make them grow better. I would also love to hear if you've let the seeds spread and if they've ever become an invasive problem. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends and go have a wonderful garden adventure.